Welcome to e -Dina. Today we have independent journalist A.K. Shiburaj from Kerala. Welcome Shiburaj to e -Dina. So tell our audience something about uh, how is as a journalist we are uh, facing lot of threats uh, because of the political situation in the country and in different states. How is it different in Kerala? How conducive uh, being a journalist is in Kerala? Yeah, definitely what happens in India will affect Kerala also. Kerala also part of India. And but it's a little different uh, what happens in North Indian states or in what happens in other media landscapes is not exactly happening in Kerala. But uh, Kerala media landscape also is gradually changing. Uh, you find even the state intimidation on media freedom also is happening in Kerala. Recently, uh, two, three journalists were booked for what they were doing, what they were doing as their job. Okay. And, uh, and also one important thing is uh, the right wing forces is making uh, very significant inroads uh, in sp spreading their ideology. And also that, that is reflected. Uh, I'll just give an example for that uh, in the recent Ram Janbhumi uh, celebration. Almost all medias in Kerala celebrate it, except uh, in print, I think two, three medias correctly, politically, they could publish what's really happening there. In visual media, I think one or two media, uh, they had a, for example, they were reluctant to say it was built on uh, a uh, masjid, after demolishing the masjid and a new temple was built there. Most of them were part of the celebration, the hysteria that was created by BJP throughout our nation. So in Kerala is not an exception where uh, the media landscape is unaffected by what's happening or what we term as Godi media. But it, it, as I said before, it's not the same thing or you cannot find that kind of or Arnab Swami <laughs> kind of aggressive things you may not find in Kerala media discussion. A journalist from Kerala, Siddhi Kappan, was arrested during lockdown when he had gone to cover the Hathras uh, rape case. Uh, and it was almost for 2.5 years he was in jail and recently he was released. How was the atmosphere in Kerala? How did they take it and the journalist community? What was their response to the arrest? Yeah, um, he's on bail now and uh, facing the court trial. And uh, you, you may know that uh, uh, it's not just planted by the state, even the media one, houses were part of that. Even uh, some of the colleagues even uh, gave uh, some reports against him. That also was a reason for arrest. And in Kerala, I, don't, I didn't find that, though it was a very important incident uh, happened in, Ker in India and one of the journalists from Kerala, and it was not a big news in Kerala at that time. And uh, prime time debates and discussions was not taken up that much seriously about what happened to him. And it is great surprising thing is that even when he came back, uh, there was no media houses to give him a job because he's struggling to find his livelihood. He has a family and the whole social, socio-economic system yeah, which should have been there for his support. And, he, and I think that he's still struggling. And you, so you know that uh, uh, Kerala Islamophobia is also very much prevalent. So many people, that the middle class, upper middle class, even the educated class believe that he's part of a kind of terrorist organization. So it's, it, there is no indication from any of the state agencies. People, people tend to believe that he has done something extreme or there should be some reasons to arrest him. So um, it might be a, a discussion among the, six, the, the secular uh, class or the journalists, independent journalists, but I don't think that it was a serious discussion or point of concern for even for mainstream media. Okay. Uh, we, we spoke earlier that uh, Kerala has a history of uh, like long history of journalism and uh, media freedom. Could you tell us a little bit about that uh, and how it came about in Kerala? Uh, actually the first uh, newspaper, uh, 18, 1847, uh, Dr. Herman Gundert started in Talsheri in the north part of Kerala and uh, after that uh, at the end of 19th century and beginning of 20th century, there's so many publications, periodicals came up in Kerala. And, uh, and it was not just happening in isolation because uh, it was also part of 
independent movement and also social reform movements, uh, especially against casism, against social injustice. So media had, or publications, or the print media had a big role uh, uh, in deciding the course of uh, the social reform movements. So now, what happens is, uh, after that, uh, the, the, elect the CPM government, the communist government, first elected communist government came to power in Kerala. And they also did a lot of progressive steps, but in between somewhere the reform movements could not take the next step forward and somewhere stopped. And I think that in that vacuum, the, 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 the Hindu to a right wing politics entered and uh, they are making strong hold in Kerala, though they can't have an electoral victory so far uh, in Kerala. So, as you described that they are making inroads, could you describe for our viewers how they are making inroads, in which way through small level elections or through their cadre base is increasing, how, how, how are they making inroads in Kerala? And I will tell you one example, why uh, CPM, the Communist Party could make such a strong uh, hold in Kerala because of their grassroots kind of work, work. That the Kerala yes. view is strong. I feel that uh, now that is uh, not taking the, uh, the same kind of work happening in Kerala. But in that place, RSS, it, you, you, may, you may know that the highest number of shakhas of yes, RSS yes, is in yeah, Kerala. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, they spread all the cultural invasion. And it's not just though the, the RSS cadres are not just men. So whatever man learn in shakhas definitely reach the family. Right, and also I'll tell you an example of what happened in Shabrimala verdict came uh, uh, in favor of women entry in the temple. So they found that it was a good opportunity to spread their message, and also they could mobilize the different sections of women, uh, so-called devotees, and uh, they uh, they were they could st strongly oppose the government decision to implement the court verdict. And there, the left government, which took a strong stand in the beginning, they had to withdraw their stand. And uh, even the UD of the, the, the Congress and all had a very loose and they were uh, the so-called soft Hindu stance they were taking. And the, the months long protest against it. And then finally, we can say that uh, whatever reform movements or gender movements, uh, the progressive steps what Kerala achieved, uh, took a regression. I, so I, I find their face of it's a face of regression, right? So outwardly we find uh, it, we we are safe from uh, <laughs> BJP communalism, or, uh, communalism. Yeah. So, but, but out inwardly we can find uh, it it has created the social absence of social reform movements has created a lot of vacuum, and the political parties are not able to take a strong stand. As you find in the case of Congress, is not able to take a strong stand against Hindutva politics. The same thing is happening even among the left left parties in Kerala. So there, who is getting, who is gaining out of it? Definitely uh, the right wing politics. Why do you think left government is not able to take a strong stance against uh, this kind of politics? See, out that is a, I think that we had to analyze what really happened uh, after the reform movements in Kerala. Mm, uh, the Ayankali movement, uh, Sri Narayana Guru, uh, SNDP, uh, then Poigel uh, Achapen. So, so many reform, at, uh, reform leaders we had. So, once PPM came to power, in the first phase of the uh, gov government, or in some years, uh, maybe till 70s or 80s, it could carry on with some some of the uh, the, the the results of social movements, but maybe. Um, if you want to say exactly, maybe we can say once the neoliberal policy started implementing in our country, it has it has really affected the socio-cultural fabric of Kerala. And uh, why they are not why they are not able to take strong stand because even their supporters are in favor of a kind of into ideology, though it is not reflected daily, mm -hmm. right? So if you for, I'll tell you one example. There I have so many friends. Um, who are part of the the, the progressive uh, movement or left parties? If you talk to them two three minutes, mm. after a con after a certain stage of a conversation, they, you can find that they are also spreading insl Islamophobia. They also find that Modi is a great leader because he 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 is he is an aggressive leader who can lead our country and also who can stop the Muslims who would have grabbed the, the wealth, the land in our, in our state. And uh, so, so what you think that 
Electorally, there is no visibility for them, but culturally, they are taking Socially, roots. culturally, they are exactly. taking roots. And it is because of the changing landscape, economic and social yeah. changes that are affecting the world is also affecting Kerala in that way. You mentioned about social reform movements in Kerala. Again, as an outsider, we are told that Kerala model of development is a suitable model. It has managed to uh, remain free of the communal forces and to some extent economic success is also there. So, could you tell something about this Kerala model of development to our viewers? I think that Kerala model of development should not be much celebrated. Uh, if you examine closely, it, it was also a product of socio-cultural reform movement that happened in Kerala so that you, have, you had uh, uh, health indexes, education level, mortality rate. Were, uh, so, in some of the indications of development was shown in Kerala. But economic, so those uh, progressive uh, indications or indices were transformed into uh, economic development because the educated, the so-called educated class, those who are aware of uh, what's happening around the world, could explore outside economic sources. Like many, there was a lot of migration happening in Kerala towards Gulf, European countries, and that brought a lot of wealth to Kerala. So that there were, but at the same time, there was nothing happening on the ground. There was no production. Agriculture sector was very weak. There was no self-sufficiency in any section. But we had health sector, education sector, which was progressing because of the money flow came from outside. Now it is crumbling because the, the, you know that the worldwide economic system is yes. not as usual before. And on that, when you don't have something sustainable or, or a strong ground, and when you're building on something else, it's not sustainable, sustainable. right? That issue is still there. And one of the states in, in India, which is state, which has serious economic problem faced is in Kerala. So most of the news that comes out of Kerala is very, even the media houses who say that they are South Indian media outside Kerala, the most of the, most of the news is very sensational news. Some series of murders that were happening or some scam that happened. So only these kind of news come out of Kerala. Do you think media outside Kerala has certain biases in their reportage on Kerala or only why only such kind of stories coming out of Kerala? Yeah, definitely the Godi media will be for, for them. Uh, Kerala will be a target. They have to tarnish Kerala's image because it's, that's because they could BJP or Sangh Parivar could not have an electoral victory. So that is one reason that you see that only this kind of news is about uh, happening about Kerala. And second thing, media in Kerala also is behind sensational news because there is a uh, there is a, uh, hunger for breaking news. So who can win first? And that 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 sometimes they could not follow ethics of journalism uh, in that run. So, and also uh, the quality of journalism also is coming down mainly because uh, there is little space for real analysis, right? So you can't just publish what's happening. So there should be some kind of uh, time-taking process should be done so that they can give the, uh, the ground reality in a proper way. And one more thing, important thing is I feel that uh, it all it cannot happen in isolation when there is something a vacuum space in the socio cultural space and when there, especially when there is no uh, strong movements on the ground and media also be, is a part of society right and uh, it also definitely affect them the movie kerala story had come some months ago it became a big tool propaganda tool for using cinema to spread these kind of propaganda and uh, how it was received in North India. What was the response in Kerala for this movie? Yeah, you know that uh, RSS or the, the Sangh Parivar tried different tools, tried to apply different tools, different tactics in Kerala, which is, so they, this is one of the failed uh, tool, I can say that it was not well accepted in Kerala. And of course, maybe it must have some kind of impl implications outside Kerala. And uh, I think that in K the socio, sorry, the, the, the communal forces could not make use of that tool successfully in Kerala and it's a failed story and I, didn't, I don't think that they will try such kind of things again in Kerala. Lok Sabha elections are very near, in a few months we'll have Lok Sabha election and what do you think, what are your projections for Kerala in the Lok Sabha election 
and uh, overall India, how do you feel we are going to see a huge change? How will it affect the polity and society of India? Yeah, uh, and yes, Kerala. So, yeah, so, so far, BJP could not uh, win any uh, Lok Sabha seats in Kerala. And uh, Kerala is a mixed society, right? It is a Hindu population majority, but uh, Christian population also and Muslim population. And also because of this demographic uh, peculiarities as well as uh, UDF, the, the led, Congress led UDF and, uh, and uh, CPM led uh, uh, LDF had a strong back, uh, backup there. They, they have uh, cadres there. So, and also these votes are being split. Uh, and uh, we don't need a Maha Ganpatan there as it happens in North. So, so that because of this equation and when the minority votes get consolidated, so because of these different reasons uh, and also as I said the, the capital, social capital we have because of the social reform movements, BJP also, I don't think that they can make uh, a electoral victory this time also, but they are making it a very concerted effort at least to grab one seat so, so there is an increase attempt increase their vote share uh, it's not, not just increase, increasing the vote share is happening there uh, but uh, at, if you can get that it's one uh, seat there so it's a huge victory for them and definitely kerala society will have to pay a high price for that and especially they're trying to get it in Trishur, maybe possibly trying in uh, Trivandrum and Kasargod, there is a Mancheri district which is uh, a critical constituency weekend. So there are two, three critical areas, but I don't think that this time they can, <laughs> whatever effort or what, how much money they pump, we do not know what kind of experiments they are going to do there, we don't know. But one thing is very sure, whatever games they do in North India or the experiments they have done in Gujarat cannot be replicated as it is in Kerala. That they are also very, very, very much aware, aware of that so uh, so we don't expect that this time also they can we can, they can make any victory there we can hope so. yeah uh, okay thank you shibaraj for coming to edina and uh, sharing your ideas on kerala and Ker kerala socio political landscape and uh, and for similar discussion and news please follow edina.com and i'm swati signing off from edina thank you Matashto Vishesha video Kalanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Kalabagatiyalu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.